Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about water fed. Maybe there's some things you don't know if you use it. If you're new to it and you want to get a little better understanding, this is the episode for you. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? I have a look around if it's your first time here. Hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, hopefully it's better than a cat video, and hopefully you dig it. But if you are one of the longtime super epic cool kids, you watch every episode, you thumbs up, and of course you buy your supplies through me. Shameless plug time. Be beware. Uh, thank you. It is because of you that I can buy fancy sweatshirts from Sam's Club. So <laughs> thank you very much for everything. Um, I do de genuinely appreciate it, and it's coming up to season. Woo! So if you need supplies, I want to be your guy. My number is 862-312-2026. Shoot me a text. Be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. And I would love to put that in for you. Love to put that in for you. Big or small, it does not matter. Every sale counts towards me getting credit for them. So definitely do that. And uh, on a second note, as you go into this prepping more and more closer and closer to the busy season well get american window cleaner magazine because you are investing in your future in your company in your industry shameless plug number two go to awcmag.com get a subscription and tell me you got a subscription i want to know uh high five to all of those who do both they got a subscription and i put in all their orders for you uh, you guys are absolutely, absolutely epic. I hope you get something out of the show. But today we are talking about water fed, and I know a lot of you know water fed already. I know that. Man, I know that. But I want to go over the world of water fed again. Because maybe you have some questions. Maybe you didn't want to ask. If you do have questions, that's what I'm here for, by the way. If I don't answer your question, shoot me a text to let me know. But. There's a lot of information in the world of water fed, and it's kind of like if you're not doing water fed, you just look at it and you're like, okay, I don't quite get this magic wand thing. I don't quite understand uh, how it works or if it will work, and I've heard people have bad results. And I just want to say, if you've had anybody, or let me rephrase, because this is the free, this is what you always hear. Somebody says they went to somebody's house, uh, booked a job or did something, and they said, uh, I hope you're not using one of those water-fed brushes or those brooms with the water. They don't work. And then you say, yeah, I get tons of work because they don't work, and my customers don't want me to use it and all that. Yes, just like a squeegee. If you use it wrong, it will not work. It just won't. It, and here's the thing. If I hand somebody off the street a squeegee and I say, hey, clean that window, it's going to look terrible. <laughs> They're just going to make it look awful, right? And when they hand it back to you, that person goes, oh, man, I just got to practice. I'm really bad at that. I have never used it before. Oh, you know. But if I hand somebody a water fed and say, hey, do this, and it doesn't turn out good, they go, ah, this doesn't work. Told you it doesn't work. No, 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 you just did it wrong, right? So it looks like a magic wand, but it's not. It still does have to be done right. The learning curve on water fed is ridiculously short. Um, just to kind of give you guys an example, when I had uh, new employees starting on, uh, we would always teach them uh, trad and water fed kind of in conjunction, depending on what position they kind of came in for, it would take... Uh, max about six weeks to really not have to review any of that person's work on traditional, right? We'd have somebody shadow over their shoulder for, you know, a, a day as they're trying to getting over. We'd have them go over all that work, and it would be weeks. Uh, not always six weeks if they were doing really well, but that would be kind of the max. With a water fed, it's an hour. An hour is the most we'd ever have to go back and check. As long as you're understanding the concept it is really, really a fast learning curve. Now, you can do it and then not, you know, think you're doing it good, get done with the whole project in their spots. That's not because the system's not working. If the water's zero, uh, we'll get into that. If the TDS, 
the reading that you have from that water is zero, that means there's zero things in the water to spot. That means you're leaving dirt up there somehow. Usually it's frames, that type of thing. But the process is simple. You take that water-fed system, which takes hose water, purifies it, runs it up a pole and out of a brush. You scrub and rinse the frames every single time. Scrub and rinse the frames. If you're not doing that, you just learn something right there. Always do that, then scrub, then rinse the glass. And go to the next one, right? Super simple. It purifies the water, takes all the minerals out of the water so that if you poured that on a window, it would not leave spots. If you just used hose water... It would be like hosing off a black car in the sun. You're going to get a ton of spots, right? When you go through the car wash, the end of the car wash is going to be um, a spot-free rinse. A spot-free rinse uh, is the reason that nothing spots on the glass, right? Same concept. They use a giant RO. We use an RO and DI because we want to get it even more pure, right? So that is really, really just a simplistic way of how pure water works. We agitate the dirt. The dirt becomes uh, part of the water. Water strives to be dirty just in general and then rinses off, right? You walk on to the next uh, window. Yes, it looks like a magic wand. Yes, people go, well, that doesn't clean. If you've never used it, I know that's what you think. People go, well, what about, what about, you know, tar on the wind, whatever the excuse is, <laughs> water fed does what a squeegee and scrubber does. If you use a squeegee scrubber, uh, huck towel or whatever your detail towel is, a water fed does the same thing. A water fed is not some kind of magical hard water removing paint scraping, um, you know, artillery fungus, uh, uh, removing thing just isn't that it is just like a scrubber and squeegee so when people go well it doesn't do that i still have to get up there well yeah i mean you know you're still using uh the same things other than a scrubber and squeegee so that's where you see a lot of people in the beginning um for first time cleans they kind of want to do it traditionally kind of get it dialed in and that's cool do it that way if that's what you want most of the jobs we could still start even with water fed uh but that was us uh you're different and it's your company you can do everything and anything you want with that company, right? So that's how it works. That's the the kind of concept or idea of how it works. You're taking everything out of the water and now you're using that water then to clean the windows and that's why they don't spot. As you rinse with a standard brush, you're pulling it off the glass, letting just the water, the pure water go through and that rinses the window. Move on to the next one. So let's talk about water quality. If you're in an area, and you know, usually, if you're in a hard water, soft water area, right? With that being said, we do have a TDS uh, kind of uh, guide on on the site. Uh, It's a general guide, obviously. It's just what's being reported as TDS in the area. Uh, But you can go to windowcleaner.com and find the TDS one. Or talk to me, and I can pull up your TDS just by zip code. Um, But it uh, does vary between the two. Now, if you're under... 100 TDS, uh, or in that area, um, a DI only system could work well for you. Uh, the cost of resin is not more um, than uh, the cost of the system. Now, let me kind of explain that. So, in water itself, you have a TDS. Some places have 800 TDS, some places have 40. TDS. That's total dissolved solids, stuff that's in the water, right? Minerals. Now, if you're in an 800, that's a lot of things that have to be pulled out. In an RODI system, which is the reverse osmosis deionized resin system, that is a higher level of filtration because the RO membrane, you've probably heard that, takes out 90, 90 plus percent of the minerals that are in the water before it even gets to the DI. So that 800 then turns into 80 to the DI, right? The DI looks like wet sand and that does the same thing, but we'll say each piece of sand can only take 10 TDS. Well, eventually all the sand gets used up and you have to get a new resin. You have to get new sand, right? So we want to kind of conserve that. So if you did all 800 through just DI, it would go through pretty dang fast, right? But if you're in an area where there's only 40 TDS, 
Well, you can go just DI because DI is going to be a lot cheaper to get going system-wise. That just give you prices here. Uh, the RODI system is about fourteen ninety nine, where it kind of starts. You can go up from there. The DI system uh, you can get depending on if these tanks are in a simple DI for like two hundred ninety nine dollars, something along those lines. So there's a big upfront cost in systems, but it all depends on your water quality. And the only way to really know your water, water quality is to check it. But here's some tips in the water quality side of things. If you have wells, wells will always be, not always, 99.9% .9 of the time will always have more minerals than your regular tap water. Uh, it's coming from the ground. Any type of minerals that are in there, minerals are fine in water. It's drinkable. It's great, right? It just isn't good when you're trying to clean glass with it. So if you're in a lot of wells, if you travel outside of like different zip codes, state lines, uh, counties, municipalities, your water can vary. So if you're there, you could have the, the one place you do work in could be, you know, 60 and the next place you work in could be 300. So if you're in a big variable or you're in a place with wells, stick with an RODI right out of the gate. I know it does cost a little bit more. And again, I'm a sales rep, so I apologize. Use Take it with a grain of salt. But again, if you need this stuff, 862-312-2026. Uh, no, but if you really look at the system we're talking long term any system you go with di uh, rodi anything you could have that system for potentially the next 10 years i mean all you're doing is changing filters the housing and the system is great you're just changing out the insides so this is a long-term play i know right now especially i'm recording this in february it may not be uh, a time where you are cash rich but Getting the right system right away is going to save you a ton. And in the difference between a DI only and an RODI, I know guys that are spending $1,000 a month in DI. Now, those are multiple systems, and those are the hydropower, which uses a little bit less uh, resin, and they're a little bit more expensive cartridges. But doing that, it's a no-brainer. Switch over. I just talked to a guy maybe a week ago at the IWCA show who is spending just under $1,000 a month in resin. For $1,500, you can buy an RODI system. That saves you. You know, your resin cost in an RODI system is maybe uh, $30 every three months, you know? We'll say about $10 a month in resin costs. And again, perfect case scenario and what you're doing and how efficient the RO is working and all that fun stuff. But ballpark, $10 a month. As compared to $1,000 a month, you can see how that pays uh, the user back pretty dang fast, right? Now, again, multiple systems. This is not, I don't get scared that you're going to be spending $1,000 in resin costs, right? But if you're in an 800 TDS area, you're going to spend a lot more than $10 a month in resin costs, right? So that is kind of how the water fed works. And if maybe you were using water fed, you got in on a DI because DI is always cheaper. So a lot of times people want to buy DI going, ah, I just need a beginner setup. That's not how that works. It's not a beginner setup. It is a setup that significantly is going to cost more. It's made because there are some areas that are super low TDS. My TDS here uh, in North Carolina is like 44 out of the tap. That's low. I can use a DI and I'm absolutely fine because I'm only sending 40 to the DI. You're using an RODI in uh, Arizona where you could have 800. You're sending 80 TDS to the resin when I'm only sending 40 and a whole different system, right? So you can see where that benefit happens. It's going to be cost me less money to run a DI in my area than an RODI in your area. And it's way less money uh, than if you were to run DI only. Okay. By the way, you have questions, literally shoot me a text, call me, whatever. 862-312-2026. All the stuff that we're talking about, it's not hard. It's just, um, it's something that you just don't know. So it's a little overwhelming, especially when you look at options and everything else, right? Um, 
But that is the difference between really a DI and an RO. Now, in those, you can go uh, high flow, standard, you can go PVC, you can go uh, stainless, you can go proprietary and non-proprietary. There's a lot of options. It's like anything, right? I want to give you an example. Say you want to buy a new car right now. You're like, all right, time for a new car. You're not overwhelmed by new cars. Even though there's thousands Tens of thousands of different combinations and options. You're not overwhelmed because you're like, well, I know I don't want a Bugatti. I know I don't want a, you know, Kia Rio if they even still make those. By the way, when they came out, uh, (laughs) this is back like maybe when I was in high school. This is a real thing. Our dealership, I don't know if all Kia did that, but if you bought like the Sorento or whatever the like SUV, you got literally a free Kia Rio, like the cheap car that was like nine grand new. Anyway. Still shocks me to this day. So we got the system. (laughs) That's my ADD brings us off track. You got the system, but now you need a pole, right? Obviously, you need to get the water up there, and the pole is what really does the work. You're the one doing the work, but the pole is the one that creates either fatigue or not fatigue or all that, right? And poles are really kind of like race cars. You can go with just a basic Still does the job, you know, still gets you from point A to point B, but it's going to be a little bit more taxing. It's going to be uh, harder work, and you can't quite do as much as you can if you buy the top end sports car. So it really comes down to budget. But again, hypothetically, uh, I'll talk about uh, Zero brand. Um, oh, there's another sticker there, bunch of Zero stickers. But Zero has four, uh, well, three technically now. Uh, composites. It has basic carbon fiber. It has ultra high modulus carbon fiber. And then it has a destroyer class, which again, if you want to nerd out, it's ultra high modulus, but with thicker walls, longer overlaps and made just for stiffness. Back in the day, and this is the old day of carbon fibers, brand new on the market. Um, When I bought my first pole, there was only one pole that had like carbon fiber. I bought a carbon composite pole. That was how long ago that was. Uh, It was still like $2,600 or something. Anyway, now if you're going, say, 30 feet, you don't need to have a sports car, right? Say say you're a little old lady who's just going to church. You don't need a uh, Lamborghini to go to, unless you want one, right? You don't need that if you're just going to church or the grocery store or whatever, you know. That would be like a Zero Pro Basic. Cheapest pole to kind of get into. Um, You are still in carbon fiber, but it's not the lightest and it's not the stiffest, right? Next step up or the midsection is ultra light high modulus. Now, it's going to be a little stiffer, but it's going to be a quarter less weight. So you get a lot lighter pole, which means you can go a little bit taller, a little bit more stiffness in there too. Uh, but that's the ultra high modulus, still carbon fiber, just a lighter version of carbon fiber. And then the top tier in that one is the destroyer class. That is stiff, stiffness, 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 it's heavier than the basic version. Uh, but we're talking about, you know, these whole poles, a 30 foot pole in a Pro Basic is like four pounds or something. Um, I don't have that in front of me, but it's like four something maybe. It's super, super light. I mean, we're not talking about a light, you know, 30 foot pole that could do first, second, some third stories, right? But you're having a stiffer pole. Now, really in the world of poles, there's different brands, there's different manufacturers. They all have good things and a lot of them are really comparable, really comparable. But the problem was for a while was that companies went so light that all they were focused on was lightness and you were getting these sections that you could literally step on and they would shatter like a glass ball. Craziness, craziness, right? So they realized that it's not the weight of the pole. That was kind of the weight wars way back 10 years ago, but it's more of the stiffness, right? Let me explain stiffness to you and why this matters, right? If I'm scrubbing a window... The pole has a brush and the water's coming out of the brush. The brush is what's doing the work, but the translation is what's being done with the pole. So if I push on the pole at the ground and say I push on it and it has, you know, um, uh, 
say it's uh, five pounds of pressure, 10 pounds of pressure, we'll say. If I push 10 pounds of pressure down here, up at there, up at the uh, brush, I want as close to 10 pounds as I can. Now, there are no diamond poles, just nothing is absolutely stiff. But on a basic composite, I'm going to lose 50%. That's the bend of the pole. You've seen the videos where there's a big bend in the pole. You lose some of the push because it bends up and then you're actually not having as much there to push the brush there. So if you took a very floppy or you know uh, more flexible composite on a larger pole, you're going to have issues. It's going to be so flexible that the middle of the pole will hit the building before the top actually connects to the glass. Right? So if you could somehow have a pole where I put 10 pounds of pressure here and it translates to 10 pounds up there, I don't have to worry about the pole going side to side and trying to go slower to control that. I don't get so much bounce on the, the glass from the carbon doing that. And I am going to just fatigue myself way less with a stiffer pole. Now, the price difference between, say, a uh, Pro Basic and a Destroyer class you're talking 549 on the basic at 30 feet and 1499 on the destroyer class. A lot different price wise. But if you won the lottery yesterday and you for some reason still wanted to be a window cleaner, it would be an easy choice. You want to go stiff, stiffness, stiffness, stiffness. Because I know that every window cleaner I've ever seen has been able to handle like, you know, a six pound pole. It's not that much of a deal to deal with six pounds right it's the stiffness that makes you not fatigue and you get better scrubbing with a stiffer pole now besides all these stiffer poles and everything it really does come down to where you are in your budget if you can go for stiffer you'll never be mad that you did but that is a big big piece of it Again, different brands, different everything. Stick carbon fiber. Don't ever, ever, ever heed my words. Don't ever buy aluminum or hybrid. Just don't. It's not worth it. A couple bucks more you get into carbon fiber, right? Anyway, again, questions, call me. There's lots of polls. I can send links and that type of thing. 862-312-2026. Uh, super spammy episode, by the way. Just ignore it. You know my number. It's on the screen if you're watching YouTube. But uh, I want to put it out there because, again, Sometimes this can get a little overwhelming and we're trying to cover everything. It may not be specifically to what you're doing or what your, your, your questions are. So anyway, ask away. But the brush on the pole is a big piece of it. Now, I really, really, really like the Tucker Hybrid Brush. Tucker makes a great brush. Great brush. Uh, it's light, but the bristles do a lot of really good work. So a hybrid brush is boar's hair. You've heard of that. People call it boar's head, but that's not the name. That's actually a meat that New Yorkers like. Um, but uh, uh, it has boars here in the center and synthetic on the outside. Now, what that does is synthetic does not weep in water. It always stays the same. So you get into corners, nooks and crannies, frames and all that stuff really, really well. But the center, if you push hard enough, the center is boar's hair. And boar's hair will scrub better than synthetic. Not everybody needs more scrubbing, but if you do, that's a great brush. It's a good all-around brush. If you have just boar's hair, you get a lot of scrubbing power. You get more drag on the glass. So it's a little harder to work with, but also wear. You get maybe six months out of a brush if it's all boar's hair. So pros and cons. You can go opposite end of a boar's hair and be all synthetic. Now, there's other brushes that do good and other brushes that aren't. There are brands that I don't need to talk about, the ones that don't like. If you want, ask, I'll tell you. Um, but there are brands out there who their brush did not hit. Um, it's just not up to par. Uh, it's like the grade of boar's hair is just awful. And Anyway, so there are good and there are bad, just like anything, right? But a lot of the brushes, all Tucker line, of course, uh, all zero actually comes with uh, Tucker brushes, hybrids, actually. Great brush, but the brush does a lot of work. Now, a benefit to that is if you need more scrubbing, you can always go into, say, a boar's hair, and there's also an attachment that is a walnut attachment. It's like a little T-bar that goes on the back of it that you can actually have to even help more. So that's all there. It's on brushes. But now you have your system, and you have your pole, and you have your brush. But what about adding a pump? You've heard people talk about pumps. 
Pumps are needed in an RODI system only, not DI. DI, there's no real restriction, right? If you're putting X amount in, you're getting X amount minus just a little out. Flow-wise, PSI. In an RODI, because the RO membrane is like uh, really tight, woven, it's not woven, but a very tight membrane, and it has to flush itself clean, but also has to somehow force the water through. So you lose some pressure out an RODI. You can throw a pump on that though, and the pump helps add PSI, pushes it through the system. Now with a pump, you can go farther, uh, you can go higher, but it doesn't change the flow of water. A lot of times people are like, well, if I add a pump, I can run two poles on a single system. You can't. I mean, again, I'm not telling you what to do. I guess you could, but you're just going to have so little water, it's going to suck. But on top of a pump, there's a high flow system. Meaning, if you want to run two poles off of a, a, an RODI, there's a system for that. If you're looking to go higher, farther, uh, taller with the pole, or just rinse faster, that's a high flow system. High flow systems, uh, unpowered high flow systems like the Zero uh, X2, uh, the new Zero Revolution Max, which is incredible, uh, the Tucker 4060, those are high flow systems. Pricing on those starts about $24.99, right? So you're paying more, but you're getting double the system. You're going to uh, double the water flow on a high flow system with no pump, no electricity. It's just the way that it runs through there, right? Not everybody needs that, but if you want to run like, you know, a rinse bar or just put a whole lot of water up there, you certainly can. It's always an option. You just got to get the right system for it, right? High flow systems for me, again, if you won the lottery yesterday, for me, it would be a high flow system if you want an unpowered system, meaning there's no motor attached to it. The... Revolution Max with like a destroyer is uh, uh, an incredible package. You have a stiff pole that works amazingly well. You never can, out, I mean, you can't even really outgrow that pole. You could go up to 90 feet with that pole if you really wanted. It sucks, but you could. And the high flow system is going to give you more water. So even if it's just you on the glass, you have more water, meaning now you can run a four jet brush you can run rinse bars easier you can get more flow out of everything or just put on another pole if you need to but again it depends on your budget where you're at an rodi system with a pole does the exact same thing as another rodi system high flow with a stiffer pole it's just you don't quite have all the bells and whistles but that's why there's options right if you're not using water fed, it is an incredible tool. Incredible tool. I would not be a window cleaner anymore without water fed. I always tell people, it's not like you can use this in somebody's living room, right? So it's just a tool. You're not going to use a ledger or an accelerator on every window, right? That would be ridiculous. You would use it when it needs to be used or when it warrants it. That's water fed. It speeds up windows, by the way. Let me talk about one thing. I'm going to go off. I don't have a script, but I'm going to go off script, if you will, for just a second. If you're in a Facebook group, which I imagine you are, we have 20 plus thousand in just one of our Facebook groups, you see people who go, Waterfed doesn't work, right? Or they go, ah, oh, I could smoke you in Waterfed by doing it traditional. You're absolutely 100% wrong. This upsets people every time. If you do not own a water fed, you think that you are as fast as water fed. Now, uh, ground level, uh, it's the same. It's going to be the same speed ground level as ground level. It just is, right? It may even take a little bit longer hair wise for water fed on ground level, um, but I still use it all on ground level if I already have the thing pulled up. But anything that you need to ladder, anything that you need, say, uh, to do pole work or anything on a second floor, I will be faster than you with a water fed, guaranteed 100% of the time. There is no, well, well would it? no. If you're pulling out a ladder, I will be faster than you all the time. Just, just to, to, to let you know, I'm scrubbing and rinsing the window, walking to the next one. You're setting a ladder up, extending the ladder, setting it in the dirt, making sure that it's not falling, climbing that ladder, scrubbing that window. Then you're going to squeegee that window. Then you're going to detail that window. Then you're going to walk back down the ladder, drop the ladder, move it to the next window, set the ladder up and do the whole thing again. I'm already like three, four windows past you, right? 
it is always faster. Always. So it's faster. I don't have to get on ladders, right? I, I maybe once a year need to pull out a ladder for windows. And that's like if I got some weird, super low pitched sun, um, uh, skylight or something I'm trying to hit, I can get a better angle, but I don't need ladders. I don't need ladders, which means I'm not going to fall off something I'm not on. I don't need to carry it, which drays you down. I don't need any of that. I don't need to worry about sketchy windows or how am I going to get that. I don't need to worry about dormers or 12-12 pitches, super pitches, or any of that stuff. I don't need to worry about the sun because I can do it in direct sunlight and not direct sunlight. It's not going to dry. My soap's not going to be there. And frames get cleaned. You're cleaning the frames. If I have residue, oxidation, anything, I'm already cleaning the frames and don't have to worry about it. It's absolutely an incredible tool. If you have questions, again, 862-312-2026. I literally want to just help. If you decide you want to buy one, well, I really do want to put an order in for you too if that's the way that you want to go. But if you're just like, dude, I want to understand more, shoot me a text. Let's talk about it. It's a super easy once you put it out there, uh, but getting into it's a little bit tricky. And if you're already in the water-fed game and you want to step up your game, let's do it. Give me a call. I want to be your rep. I truly say that all the time. I really, really do. Let me be your rep. Shameless plug for W Series done. Shameless plug number two is American Window Cleaner Magazine. You guys have heard me say it all the time. We get a ton of new subscriptions. You guys are going crazy. I love it. By the way, thank you. Thank you, truly thank you for making that uh, magazine such a stinking success. I genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. Hope you love it. If you want stickers, if you want a magazine, real paper magazine that you can read on the can... <laughs> Send it to your door every single month. Go to awcmag.com forward slash sub SUB and get a subscription. We even do subscriptions to Canada now. Huh? Pretty rad. Uh, but go and do that and uh, get into WaterFit. It's absolutely a blast to use. It really is a great technology. And don't listen to the people who don't have a system and say it doesn't work. Don't listen to the people who say you're a splash and dead because they don't own a system. And if it's not in budget for you, that's cool. You don't have to have every tool. But don't tell me it doesn't work because I live and die by it. That was drastic to say I like it. Anyway. All right. Well, I have. I uh, hope you have a great week. Get into Waterfed, but more importantly, go out there and be epic.